Do you know the difference between the signs of Alzheimer's and age-related changes? Maybe you don't. Maybe you think you do. Stay tuned because our guest today knows all about that. Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Scan FYI. Nice to see everyone today. Hi, Mary Beth. Good morning, Andrea. How are you? Beautiful on this actually beautiful day. Exactly, exactly. So good morning to everyone. I'm happy to have with us today Robin Cohn from um, Alzheimer's Association. Um, Robin is Director of Programs and Services. So good morning, Robin. Good Good morning. morning. Thank you Thank so you. much for being with us today. You have My some pleasure. important information today to share with us. And we should mention Robin is, has her true colors behind yes. her. Purple. Yes. yes One of sir. us was prepared. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that is the color of the Alzheimer's Association. So Robin, tell us a little bit about what you do for the organization and what the organization is as a whole. Sure, absolutely. And thank you very much for having me today. I'm Robin Cohn, Director of Programs and Services for the Alzheimer's Association. We are the National Association, the largest nonprofit healthcare organization dedicated to the mission of Alzheimer's and dementia. I represent the Greater New Jersey Chapter and oversee programming as well as care and support services. Robin, so you know let me no, let me just mention so I don't forget to say it later. Robin is going to have a lot of information. There's going to be a lot of links. Don't worry about memorizing anything. We will put all of this on Facebook and YouTube so everything will be made available to all of our audience. Okay. Sorry, I wanted to say that. Oh no, I was just going to ask. So Robin, the Greater New Jersey chapter that goes from Ber is it from Bergen County all the way down to which county in New Jersey? Ocean County, all the way through Sussex County. Sussex County. I oversee and represent 14 counties okay. of the state of New Jersey. And where I leave off, my colleagues in the Delaware Valley chapter pick up the last and the bottom seven counties okay. of our state. We're the National Association. So we have opportunity to collaborate with our colleagues all over the country. Wonderful, wonderful. So I know that you brought with you today some uh, statistics, national and state statistics, statistics on Alzheimer's, which I think is really important to share. So people really understand the scope of the problem. Yes, absolutely. And in March in 2021 and every year, we release our facts and figures data. So our communities can certainly find it on our website. And I know ladies that you will certainly post it, alz.org slash facts. And in New Jersey, we have statistics that now show over 190,000 people in our state with the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. That's a lot of people. Absolutely. And uh, we expect in 2025, for it to climb to 210,000 with an estimated percent change of over 10%. And this is the number of people 65 years of age and older with Alzheimer's disease. So when you take a look at those statistics, knowing that it's underreported, yeah. this is really <clears throat> an opportunity for us to continue to inform and educate all of our community members. I'm, I'm just, I'm stunned by the number. And uh, exactly. And when we take a look at dementia deaths during the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, we also have to pause and uh, work very closely with all of our families and caregivers. This has been such a difficult time. Yeah, Robin, you mentioned that before we came on air that, you know, this has been such a trying time for all of these families trying to, you know, um, care for their loved ones with Alzheimer's. So it's been, it's been definitely a challenging time. It's a very challenging time for all of our families and like all of our communities and organizations, we pivoted to virtual care and support service delivery. And since March of last year, we continue marching forward, helping all of our families with finding the local resources and the services as well as education. So all of our families can be more empowered and have access to make that next decision. 
Now, Robin, you had mentioned that now that you, you pivoted, that's the word of the day for everyone. Scared exactly. Too. So that means that you, you were saying that that meant, meant now that you had daily webinars that people would be able to access to share yes. information? Yes, we have educational okay. webinars across the entire spectrum all right, of, that's Alzheimer's, good to know. of Alzheimer's and dementia. And we also have a program on COVID-19 and caregiving, which is extremely important for families. It's an opportunity for us to present our education in a environment that is very um, flexible and adaptable to the needs of the community. And we have an opportunity for our community members to speak with our staff as well as our uh, lecturers and have a conversation and have an opportunity to ask for those resources that are so important. Now, I, I would be willing to bet that while many people out there certainly have heard of the Alzheimer's so Association, they don't have a clue about all of your resources, all of your services. So I think that would be a really good thing to let folks know what exactly, what would be the reason to reach out to you? What is, are the services that you offer? Well, thank you very much. And the number one service is our 24-7 helpline. That is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The number, and I know that you will post it. I do want to cite right. it as 800-272-3900. Always answered by a live person, which is very important, a master's trained clinical specialist who will be able to help people when they need the help. And the service that's provided is information, resources, any program, any service that anyone needs, and it's available throughout the entire country. We also can speak in over 200 different dialects, which is extremely important to be able to provide the information in a manner that is literate and can certainly help people to better understand whether they are just starting the journey or whether they need respite services or any other type of care and support service. We also provide care consultation services. What's important also to note is that all of our services are free. And in the time of where we are faced, right, with um, economic issues, right, for all of us, not only since the pandemic, but we're all facing different social situations, it's important to know that you have an organization that you can go to to be able to help people that is free. We also provide caregiver support groups so that we help families to be able to meet other caregivers. We have also memory cafes for persons living with Alzheimer's and dementia and their care partners and other types of social engagement programming. What's important as well is that we have a website, alz.org, which happens to be one of the best healthcare websites that is just full of different portals that help people with caregiving if they're interested in identifying perhaps a public health or perhaps a research area that they wanted to further explore. We have a professional site as well. We have so many resources that are available for everyone to be able to access. And all, all of this would be accessed through your main website. Correct. Which Correct. is really awesome for people. So really that's the one place you need to go to look to get your- Absolutely. Absolutely, that should be the first step that anyone takes as soon okay. as the diagnosis is made. Let me just ask you quickly, because uh, we could do a whole other sequence on this, is the caregivers. So yeah. are most, of, most folks with Alzheimer's in a home situation or are, are they in a, you know, not home in, in some sort of a facility? How does that it, break down? It's really a combination. And now, you know, it's a very difficult time to say, right? There are a lot of people that, you know, are caregiving in the home. We know in our state of New Jersey, there are 347,000 caregivers. That is, you know, a data point that I really believe needs to, you know, be accentuated because um, we're looking at a tremendous amount of caregivers, you know, that are facing other chronic health conditions as well, right? right. right? So it's an important um, time for our caregiving community to be able to support our caregivers, especially during the pandemic, to provide them with emotional supportive listening, and certainly the resources and the information 
that they need for caring for their loved ones. It's the most difficult job in the world. And with someone with Alzheimer's, you know, it, it, um, it, it's a life journey. And we have to prepare our caregivers to be able to take that journey and live well with dementia for themselves. There are so many caregivers that really fall ill and often, you know, will pass because of the stress. Physical and, and mental. caregivers can be notorious for not caring for themselves. Absolutely. Which is not the way to go, but. Well, it's a learned behavior, right? So we, we have programming for caregivers. We have one programming uh, offering that is healthy living for your brain and body. So it talks about the importance of nutrition and self-care, physical exercise, social and cognitive engagement, not only for your loved one that may be um, just recently diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment or early stage dementia, but also for yourself. It's a lifestyle, right? <clears throat> when we talk a lot about adapting you know, different types of behaviors. But now, so speaking of behavior, let's, Mary Beth, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, that's probably where the support groups really come in handy, right? Because you're supporting each other and making, you're making yourself realize that you need to take care of yourself because, you know, you need to be there for the other person. Right, and knowing that you need to take care of yourself is one step in the right direction, but actually moving forward Doing it. Right. And adapting those behaviors are very difficult. So you're right, Mary Beth. That's why the support groups are so important. We also have ALS Connected, which is an online message board. So caregivers can communicate with other caregivers around the country. And that's what is so, um, you know, important about our, our association, the Alzheimer's Association, is that we have so many resources for caregivers. And we want everyone to know that they can access other caregivers 24 seven through this one message board that is so important for our families. And then certainly at the local level, we're able to engage and be able to help our, our neighbors and our families. Right. I guess as a caregiver, you, you can often feel like, you know, I'm, I'm all alone in this. Nobody understands what I'm going through until you speak to other caregivers who are really experiencing something very similar. So I think a support group is a great way to go. Absolutely. To you're not alone in this. Right. And our programming for people living with dementia, we are just starting, you know, book clubs, different types of social engagement programs, so that it's an enjoyable experience. And one in which we could further engage both cognitively, right, as well as certainly socially. And that's so important during this time. Robin, can you give us, uh, I know there's something on your website, Know the 10 Signs, very yes. um, invoking Letterman here again with the top 10. But what are some ways that people can understand what the difference between something that's age-related and truly something that might be um, on the path to Alzheimer's? Sure. The Alzheimer's Association has identified 10 signs. And we can certainly, you know, um, ask all of our, you know, community members to go online to alz.org slash signs. Uh, but just as an example, the number one sign that most people are more familiar with is memory loss that disrupts our daily life, right? And, you know, that is one of the most common signs of Alzheimer's and dementia. And certainly, you know, forgetting, you know, recently learned information. So that would be a sign uh, of Alzheimer's disease. And that includes forgetting important dates and events, perhaps asking the, the same information over and over again. We certainly hear from community members about that repetition, right? And maybe relying on memory aids and different types of you know, reminders from technology and family and friends a little bit more frequently. However, if you compare it to an age-related change, you know, we all forget names, right? We all sometimes will forget, you know, a dental appointment, right? But we remember later on. And that is the difference, that we're able to retrieve that information. We remember that we forgot it. We remember exactly the, um, the date, the appointment, and, and so that's the difference. And it's always about the frequency and the intensity of memory loss as well. 
All right. Well, again, lots more info on the website. So make sure that you check it out. All the links, all the resources will be in Facebook and YouTube. <clears throat> Absolutely. And then Robin, we look I... across the country, I just want to mention to everyone that there are more than 6 million Americans living with Alzheimer's. So I know prior you know, too, we talked about New Jersey and our state, and every state we have facts and, and figures available. So it's, it's very interesting when you look at the different states, but what's most important is that one in three seniors dies with Alzheimer's or another dementia. So our facts and figures are very telling in terms of the state of affairs, so to speak, and why it's so important to come together with partners such as SCAN and our communities to be able to work collaboratively, right? Because we certainly can't do anything alone without our partners and our community members. Nobody, no, no one can. It really is all about collaboration. Absolutely, it certainly is. And we welcome more community partners to work with us. We have so many education webinars that we'd like to be able to speak to, one of which is know the 10 warning signs. So this is a, you know, a very important program to communicate to the community and be able to really go through all the different signs, give examples, and then compare them to age-related changes as we talked about before. So Robin, to, to kind of wrap things up, what's the most important thing that you want our, our, our viewers to understand about Alzheimer's? I think what's important is to understand Alzheimer's and dementia. To understand that dementia is a very large umbrella this is how we you know, talk about Alzheimer's and dementia and compare the different types of dementia, meaning that dementia is really not a disease. Dementia is a spectrum of different signs, symptoms, and syndromes. Alzheimer's is under that umbrella. Alzheimer's mm -hmm. is a disease. It is the most prominent form of a dementia-related disorder. And what's important is that there are different types Early diagnosis is very important because what we always tell our families is that you want to rule everything else out, right? So yes. if there are signs and symptoms, what's important is to make sure that your loved one or yourself, that you don't have, for example, a vitamin deficiency, or perhaps you're, you're dehydrated, perhaps um, certainly there's a cardiometabolic issue such as a thyroid issue, or something, you know, God forbid, a little bit more serious, right? That's causing that brain fog or, you know, certainly, you know, those signs and symptoms to be more frequent, right? Early diagnosis is important. Accurate diagnosis is important because they all present differently. There's overlap, but there are certainly, there are differences. And being well prepared for the journey is so important. Early care planning, right? to be able to get um, certainly your financial you know, documents in order, as well as certainly your healthcare documents, and actually learn more, like with any other disease in arena, right? We wanna learn more. And we wanna make sure that we live well with Alzheimer's and dementia, that we're well prepared, that we're informed and educated, and that you can reach out earlier and be able to get the care and support services. One of the other areas that we haven't talked about yet are clinical trials. And what's important also to know is that we have a service trial match and trial match is a listing of all clinical trials that are open and active across the country. And there are over 200 of them that are actively recruiting both healthy volunteers and those with a diagnosis and not all are pharmacologically related. So, Certainly when um, we're looking at what we talked about before, healthy lifestyle, there are quite yeah. a bit of trials that are talking about prevention and risk reduction. And that's what's also important as well. So when someone's diagnosed early, clinical trials turn to work better for those individuals. So we have to take a look at the entire spectrum, right? As to why it's important to be able to get that diagnosis early on. So all of the, again, all of this information that Robin has been talking about can all be found in one place on their website. And it sounds like that is the number one best resource for anyone to go to. 
Absolutely. And okay. that helpline number, 800-272-3900. And also, you know, you could always reach out to any local chapter throughout the, the state. Uh, our chapter is the Greater New Jersey chapter, and we always are there for all of our families to be able to provide the information, the education, and especially during COVID-19, we're available around the clock for our families at the local level. And all your services, you said, were free. All of our services is are free. Another amazing thing. Exactly. Well, and thank we want you for everyone all you. to partner with us. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, our guest today, Robin Cohn from the Alzheimer's Association. Really, I think we've, we've really learned a lot and I hope everyone out there found it to be beneficial. I'm sure because just based on the statistics, um, we probably all know someone or many someones who are affected by this. So it's important to, to really know more and be proactive. Okay. Well, Robin, thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Okay. And remember, if it's important to you, it's important to us. I'm Andrea Tarr, and we'll see you next week on Scan FYI. Bye, everyone. Have a good day. Bye, Robin and Mary Beth. Bye. Thank you so very much. Thank you.